What's up everybody, Jeff and McAvoy here. Today we're going to be installing this Petronics Igniter 2 ignition system on the distributor of this 1965 Chevrolet Corvette. Now there is a set of explanations here which I'll ditch and um, we'll see just how it fits. Actually, um, might want to hang on to this, could come in handy. So what does this Pertronix Igniter 2 device do? What is it for? How does it work? Well, I can't say for sure. What I do know is, it replaces the original ignition points and condenser system with an electronic microcontroller. Once it is properly set, it is a fit and forget solution as there are no more points to wear out on you. What you get in the kit is a bag of shims, connectors and nuts, the magnetic reluctor ring and the electronic controller. In this package you also get a corresponding low resistance coil called the Flamethrower 2. Very American there. Okay, it's just a coil. Also you get a set of HT leads or plug wires as it were. Nothing magical about these, they're just HT leads. So that's what you get. That's what's in the box. Let's go and fit this Now this right here is a 7 16 inch wrench. It has multiple applications, one of which is removing this air filter element that we have on our engine right here. It does state in the instructions that the transformation needs to be carried out with the distributor out of the car. I will explain why later on. I did however attempt the fitment as is and it works well enough. Quick note upon removing old points, resist all temptation to just cut the earth wire and yank it out. The rubber grommet having been fitted in the mid 60s has turned as hard as a stale slice of bread by now. Carefully remove it by destroying it and remove the earth wire as a whole. Why? Because you'll want to keep the original points, condenser and coil in the car at all times as a backup system in case this electronic device fails. It's electronic man, it either works or it doesn't. One of the downfalls of high tech stuff. You can get away with fouling points and you'll be happy to get home on 6 cylinders instead of 8. Or even none at all as far as failed electronic ignition system goes. It says in the instructions that the installation of this device should be performed with the distributor out of the car. This is because the gap in between the reluctor ring and the microcontroller needs to be set to a given value. Too close or too far is no good. The thing is, it is nearly impossible to get an accurate reading with your feeler gauge while the distributor is in the car because of the play in the distributor shaft. The provided shims take care of setting this up properly, so I will have to remove the distributor anyway to set the device accurately. Don't be a dick and do everything that I do, man. Follow the instructions, that's what they're there for. This device has a brilliant built-in feature. It senses current levels in the coil and adjusts dwell angle to suit the entire RPM range. Also, the coil is a low resistance fitment, bolting out a shattering 45,000 volts. Be careful when working around the ignition on a running engine. You would sometimes get a nasty shock when adjusting points, but that was at half the voltage. This won't be any less painful, surely. Okay, let's see if this thing starts. <sighs> Just so you know, the upcoming footage depicts the reality that you will most likely be facing during such a transformation. Things never go smooth with classic cars. This is my daily routine. I'm used to it. If you easily get frustrated, just relax, Max. It's a part of the job. If truth be told, I haven't started this beast since late November. Let me use that as an excuse, okay? Okay, so it doesn't just fire up like that and give you 500 extra horsepower. Step 1. Check for power at the coil. Don't forget to turn the ignition on, you goof. Just to make sure, take the input lead off the distributor cap, place it close to the solid ground and crank away. If you see a beautiful blue spark, you're good to go. If you feel like you've just been hit by a train, 
That was 45,000 volts. In both cases, we have ignition. Step two, check for fuel. Pump a heavy, juicy squirt of fuel down the carburetor's throat. <coughs> it's fueling all right. More on that later. Let's give it another go, shall we? Damn it! Okay, we have ignition, we have fuel, I know we have compression, so start, old girl. Show me what you got. I've recently installed an electronic fuel pump on this car and I'm still busy setting it up. So I have a pressure gauge to look at and it's telling me that pressure is within spec. Nice! Ain't that something? nowadays would go on that much fuel for a week. No wonder they are so dull. This, this is horsepower. The essence of it, dare I say. So there you have it. That's how you install this Pertronics Igniter 2 system on a 1965 Chevrolet V8. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop a like, leave a comment if you did. And uh, join me on Patreon as well to support my craziness. Looking forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Catch you all in the next video. So there you have it. That's how to install this Pertronics Igniter 2 on a 1965 Chevrolet Corvette. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you drop a like and leave a comment if you did. Check me out on Patreon and follow me on Instagram. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Catch you all in the next video. Peace out.